Okay, so this weekend, as always, we're committed to you to give you some of the best experts on the planet to help you really maximize your business and be the best you can be. So our next speaker is a speaker that people have been super excited about. I know a lot of people came here to really see him. So everybody on your feet, bring some energy in the room. Get some energy in the room, hands together, hands together, and let's give a big warm welcome from Michael Dursay. Thank you, thank you. Okay, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, I remember when I, I first spoke with, uh, with Dave a couple of months ago, uh, and he told me about the, the event that he was doing with Rich, and one thing led to another. And um, we were talking about some of the things that I could possibly uh, go over. And one thing he wanted to make sure is that I didn't go over the heads of uh, many of the students. Uh, as we saw, there's a lot of people just getting started. Uh, and he said, Mike, you know, um, what a lot of the, the people are always asking for is joint ventures. And I said, well, I don't have a presentation on joint ventures. And he says, yeah, but you do it. You're one of the, one of the best in the industry. You promote for a lot of people, but more importantly, there are more people that promote your products than anybody else. There's got to be something special that you're doing. And I said, you know, it'd be pretty interesting for me to, to look into. So I, um, I went back uh, with Joe Jablonski, that's my affiliate manager right there, uh, and we, we looked at some of the things that we do in our, in our business, and we came up with the top 20 things that we do to get JV partners to promote us uh, and, and love us and keep promoting us again. Now, before I continue, I do want to let you know that I do know that studies show that there are people that actually like to find typos in books and blogs and PowerPoint, so I left them in deliberately just for you people, all right? <laughs> so in case you're noticing, so you'll know why, all right? But uh, notice, notice the word that we're using, right? JV partners. Does anybody know what the difference between a JV partner and an affiliate is? Um, no, I think, um, I think that you could, you could still have both in the, I'll tell you. Uh, affiliates are usually people uh, that you don't have a relationship with. JV partners you have a relationship with. JV partners make you a lot of money. Affiliates make one or two sales and they're on to the next thing. They, they'll maybe grab an affiliate link, not get involved necessarily in the product, maybe not review it, not be emotionally connected to it, and they'll make a $198 sale and they're on to somebody else's product. A JV partner is somebody that you can connect with and they can make you a lot of money. They could make you a thousand to thousands to tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars. In fact, uh, what uh, uh, many of you that are here, um, who, who came from, just curious, from the bonus uh, that Rich Sheffern and I did for Brendan Bouchard? Okay. Um, Brendan would say that Rich Sheffern and I were uh, very, very good JV partners. That was a $2,000 product. We sold 290 of those products for him. So if you do the math, that was a lot of money that two people did together. So we're very, very good JV partners. And he did a lot of the things that we're gonna be talking about in these slides as well. So JV partners are the people that you really wanna connect with, right? Who would like to have a $2,000 product and have somebody make 290 sales for them, right? That's a lot of money. Uh, so we're going to go over some of these things right now, so we'll jump right in. So number one, is it the big green button here, the black button in the green? See, internet marketers don't know anything about tech. <laughs> is it that one? Is it that one? Arrows on the side, I got it, there we go. The arrows on the side. Okay, number one. I have to hand it to you guys, you're already doing this, right? Travel to events, okay? And if you have a JV manager, I'm gonna talk about that in the future when, you're, when, uh, when it's time to have a JV manager because a JV manager should pay for themselves. So bring your JV manager. Next thing it says, piggyback and host non-conflicting event parties. Take your JV partners out to dinner, pick up the check, Hang out with them in the cocktail lounges and make sure to be offering or buying the drinks before they even know they're paid. But let, let me go back to the one that says host non-conflicting event parties. 
One of the things that I like to do, some of you uh, may have noticed over the, uh, uh, yesterday we did it, um, in sat Saturday uh, last week at Brendan Bouchard's event in New York City, um, what, what I'll do is I'll normally get together with my, my JV partners and I'll let them know that I'm going to be in town and we like to go out to dinner. And many times uh, you could either hold, host a cocktail party. Didn't Sadiq do that yesterday as well? Or was there a cocktail party yesterday, right? Um, if, you, if you're the person that's hosting the party, you said it just before, reciprocity sets in. If people see that you're the person hosting the party, uh, when it's time for you to, uh, to, talk to talk about your product, people are going to be much more susceptible to listening to what you have to offer, okay? Number two, keep track of who you talk to. This is, this is really important, right? Um, and I'll probably even talk about um, business cards here as well. Um, but first, take, take notes of who you meet, put it in a notebook, and put all the information that you can about that person, okay? So if you meet somebody, write down their business, their website, where you met them. You know, you met them um, you know, by the piano bar. You met them uh, at the back of the room in between speakers, because it's going to help you connect and talk about all the things that you sp uh, spoke about. So put it in your notebook or notepad, or even better, get their details and put it in your smartphone. There's a note section in, the, in your smartphone where you can put notes about the person. Okay? Name and their number first is important. Okay? That's more important than the email address and their Skype, but you'll get that later. Okay? And Use the cell phone strategy. This is the one that I like the best. When I'm connecting with somebody, I don't ask for business cards. Who goes home from an event with a stack of business cards, usually in their wallet, and what, what happens to those? Yeah, they get wrapped in rubber bands, and they get stacked with all the different people that you met at events. Now, I'm not saying not to have business cards. What I'm telling you is that when you make an impression with somebody, you need to be in their phone. Because when you call them and you just see a number, who answers phones these days when you, know, when you don't know who it is? That's, we, we live in a world with, you know, with, let it go to voicemail. Or they'll send me a text message. I need to know who it is because you're not important enough if you're, you're not a contact in my phone. That's the world we live in today. So what I like to do is I like to grab somebody's phone and I like to take their phone and dial my number and then they have their number right in my phone. I'll then take my phone back, and then I send them a text message with my contact details. Does everybody know that like, you, you have a contact details, and the smartphones now allow you to share contacts? So what ends up happening is all of my details go into their smartphone. My, my name, my phone number, my email address, all that information, my picture as well, and then I'll have them do the same. So right there, we get our Skype information, our phone numbers, our email, everything like that. Business cards are they're important to have. You know why I, I, I say business cards are good? So that you're not rude when somebody asks you for your card. Uh, but in the world we live in today, you really want to be getting in somebody's phone. Um, later, follow up after you connect with somebody. Every single person that you connect with at the event, you want to follow up with them uh, with an email. And if you really connected with them and you got their Skype, follow up with them on Skype. Okay? Start the relationship. Otherwise, as my dad would say, it falls through the cracks, okay? And, um, you know, if you don't keep that relationship going, the next thing you're going to know, you're, you're just not going to be, you're not even going to be remembered by that person. Oops, skipped one. <clears throat> okay, send them text messages reminding them that it was great to see them, great to meet them, and get back to them with what you promised when you get back home, all right? So if you promised them that you would get them a comp copy of your course or your book, or if they said that uh, they like a particular bottle of wine and you, you say, you know, a great one like that, and you're going to order it from, from a, a wine store and have it shipped to them. These are the things that people really find uh, incredible when, uh, when you're building a relationship, that you said something and you followed through, right? As we say, talk is cheap. It's really the details are in the follow through. Number three, getting an affiliate manager or a JV broker. So there's a couple of JV brokers in the room. They're usually outside in the halls brokering JVs. I know uh, Mike Evans, he's probably not in the room, right? Probably outside. Uh, Sadiq, are you in the room? 
outside brokering field. I asked Joe to stay in the room for me, uh, for my presentation. Um, but okay, so, whoops. Same one. Get it, uh, this was just a blank, blank one. Um, on getting an affiliate manager, I apologize, guys. When, uh, with your affiliate manager, um, they, can, they will pay for themselves. A JV broker or an affiliate manager can go to events that you can't go to, and if they can get one person to promote your product, obviously this happens when you have an offer that's converting. I would, I would not recommend getting a JV manager if your product is not ready. But if you have a product that is ready and it's converting, you can pay a JV manager or a JV broker only on performance. You can pay them 10% of any deals that, they, that they, um, they connect for you. So if they go out and they find somebody at an event uh, and they get them to promote your product and that product does $50,000 in sales, they'll get $5,000. That's a very good thing for them and it didn't cost you anything, right? You, it's not a salary. You don't have to pay for that person if they're only getting paid on performance. So, who here, right, I'm just curious right now, who, ha, who, who has an offer right now that's converting? Okay, and uh, leave your hands up if you still have, if you have a JV manager also. Okay, so some of the hands went down. I would recommend to those people that you would at least look into uh, talking to a JV broker or having somebody to promote your products for you. And certainly when your products get, uh, get to the point where they're making, uh, where, where your offers are converting, you definitely need somebody out there working for you to get you some sales. Okay, next, ask first. All right, when you're meeting people over the phone or email or at events, what I like to, what I like to do is first get to know about that person. All right, um, ask them, how can I help you with what you're doing? Do you guys remember the, the, uh, the movie Finding Nemo? Remember, remember when uh, there was a point where at the end of the movie where Nemo like uh, fell out on the dock and all these birds like came attacking and they were all screaming, mine, 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 mine. Sometimes I feel that that's what we see sometimes at a marketing, marketing event. People will, will, <laughs> right? People will come up and they're talking, uh, here's my card, here's this, I have this. And you know, sometimes you know, we're just stunned because we, we, we didn't even get their name, we don't know anything about them. And of course, we all want to talk about our products. We all do, that's what we're here for. We all have a product. But when it's all about me, then it's all about me. It just doesn't resonate well with people. You know, we all know the, you know, the, the rules of the universe. We talk about put it out there first, it'll come back out to you, the laws of attraction, all those types of things. It's the same thing here. Um, uh, Joe, Joe, my JV manager, recommended a good book to me called The Go-Giver, right? Not The Go-Getter, The Go-Giver. It's a great book. If you haven't read it, um, it's a story about a person that's, he's a hustler, he wants to go out there, and he meets a man and he takes him through a journey, and the person uh, uh, teaches him about all these people that, um, you know, when, when he's talking to them, he's like, well, how do you make money with that? And he's like, well, that's not, that's not the point. The first thing I want to do is provide value. And it's, it's all these different lessons about um, first going out there and, and seeking ways that you can help other people, and watch how quickly those people will turn around and be there for you when, when needed. So you may not have a list to be able to, to help somebody, but maybe you have a skill. Maybe it's a webmaster skill, maybe you can connect them with somebody else, maybe you do interviews, you're good with video, whatever the case is, make sure that you reach out and say, how can I help you first? And then I, I promise you, it's just one of those laws of nature, if you're out there helping people, you're gonna have lines of people back to help you as well. Follow through with what you promise. If you, if you say you're going to do something or you're going to help somebody do something, again, like we said earlier, make sure to, to follow through, all right? Always put your JV partners first. Number five, um, have an affiliate program page. So if you have a product and you want to have affiliates, you need to have a special page that advertises your affiliate program. The worst thing you can do is have a link that says affiliate sign up here and then send them to some page that has like a blank form for them to fill out all this information in their tax ID number and all that type of stuff. Remember when I was on stage before with, uh, with Tom and Dave and I said everything we do, we do, we're selling, right? And we don't do things good, we do them great, right? So if you're gonna have an affiliate page, is it gonna be good or is it gonna be great? It's gonna be great. 
You're going to put a video up there. You're going to have sales copy about your affiliate program. You're going to, you're going to sell people on why they should promote your products. And you need to tell them what to expect as well. All right? If you have several products, I would recommend getting a special domain for your products. Brad's top affiliate products.com. Something like that. Instead of having an affiliate link at every single page, which you should, oh, and that's another thing. At the bottom of all your pages, you should have a little link that says uh, referral program or affiliates or um, either one of those are probably fine. Affiliate program, affiliates, or referral program, depending on your industry. If you're outside of, um, I would say, real estate or financing or internet marketing, I would use something like referral program. If you're dealing with the people that are in this room that understand the lingo, lingo then you can certainly put affiliate program. <clears throat> we have uh, a domain that for our affiliate products. It's called highepcoffers.com. The people that uh, my JV partners, they know what that word means, EPC. Does anybody know what EPC means? Earnings per click. Earnings per click. That's the only thing that matters to a JV partner. Over the last few years, it's become the, the key phrase when communicating with a JV partner. You know why? It's finite. It know, people can calculate the exact math based on how much traffic they can send. If you talk in terms of commissions, it's abstract. I'm going to pay you 50% commission on the front end and 75% commission on the back end. How much money are you going to make? Well, I have no idea. I don't know how your product converts. I don't know, you know, I don't, they, people just can't calculate that. But if I told you that you're going to make $3 for every click that you get in an email, every single person in this room can probably calculate how much money they would make promoting our products. Because if you know that, well, I have a list of 50 people, and when I mail, I'm going to get 10 clicks, well, then you know how much money you're going to make with $3 a click. And, if, if, and I can do the math for the people. I can put it on my affiliate page. I can say, if you can get 100 clicks, you'll make $300. If you get 1,000 clicks, you'll make 3,000. If you can get 10,000 clicks, you can make $30,000. And then I'll even maybe put, do you think you can get 30,000 clicks in a year, make, giving them a reason to think they're going to be promoting for a long term, OK? Am I going too fast for you guys? Good? OK. Next bullet point, provide swipe emails. I'll explain that in a minute. Creatives and other promotion tools. Anybody not know what swipe means? A couple of you? Great. Swipe is a term that your JV partners may say to you. So I want to make sure that you know, so I'm going to tell you. Somebody may say to you, do you have any swipe copy? What that simply means is, do you have any pre-written email copy that they can send to their list? The term is called swipe in the industry. I won't bore you with the details of where it came from, but well, maybe I will. Uh, we, we, call it, we, <laughs> we call it swipe copy. Anybody ever wonder where copywriting came from? Cop copy is exactly what it is. It's copy. The w direct marketers, back in the day, what they would do is they would see an effective ad that was running from another, uh, another competitor, and they would copy it. And even in, in, uh, when I was in the car business, we would, we would refer to it as the copy. Get, get me the copy, and get me, get me the copy from the other dealers. And we would see what they were doing. Well, they've been running this ad for the last two months, so what's successful, people copy. So that term became known as copy, and they call it copywriting. Uh, and then when you take that, we call it swipe. We swipe and copy, and it became known as swipe copy. And it's just a term that stunk, uh, that uh, stuck around. So your JV partners may tell you, do you have any swipe copy? And you want to be able to have pre-written emails because they don't know your product as good as you do. Do you want them to write the email, or would you rather write it and say, here's something that can inspire you. Go ahead and rewrite it in your own voice. But at least it has all of the bullet points, because you know the baby boomer niche better than that person may know. We were talking earlier, I may be promoting that product for him, the, um, the gentleman that was just on stage about the, uh, the baby boomer products. 
I would certainly want him to provide me with swipe copy, and I would take a look at it and then rewrite it, but I would leave the bullet points in there so that I know that it's going to convert the best, because I want it to convert for both of us, right? Because if he has a product that's helping the world, then we all win. The customer wins, I win, and the JV partner or the vendor that's selling the product wins, right? Uh, next, we say creatives and tools. So I'll give you some examples of uh, what we mean by creative. Certainly banner ads, right? And where do you go to get banners done? Well, there's a great place that I go to very often. Even though I have a graphic designer in my, in my company, I feel that uh, the people that do banners understand it better than even my guy. I go to Banners Mall. Bannersmall.com. And they have all different packages. I've got the the wide banners, the long banners, the button banners, all, diff all, all different types. You choose the package you want, very, very affordable, and uh, they'll design the banners for you and get them back for you in a few days. And you need to list these banners on, remember the page I said you need an affiliate page? You list all these things on your affiliate page. So the affiliate can grab these things and then put them all over their websites. They can send the emails. You know what else I like to do? I like to write a blog review for my product. And I label it blog review. Because a lot of my affiliates don't have a list, but they, they're dying to find a way to promote the product. So we'll pre-write a blog review, and we'll give little instructions. You may want to rewrite this so that you have unique copy in the search engine. It's not going to be as effective for them if they're using the same exact copy as everybody else, because it's, they're going to be competing with the other affiliate. Ah. Oh. One other, yeah, I'll get right there. One last thing on the, on the tools that uh, I would also recommend in the creatives is what we refer to as a thank you page ad. I'm going to talk about that when we get into integration marketing in a minute. But a thank you page ad is one of the best types of advertising you can ever get. That's working with a JV partner, and you design an ad that goes on their thank you page after they sell their product. So. Let's assume that I have another marketer in here that's selling 30 copies a day of his ebook. That thank you page where they go after they pay. Does everybody know what a thank you page is? Right? No? Somebody say no? OK. You buy a product. Here's the sales letter. Hi, it's Mike Vilsame. When you buy this product, you're going to get this, 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 and this. Hit the PayPal button, and you will get the product for immediate download. You go to PayPal, you're successfully uh, you successfully pay, and you land on the thank you page. And it says, thank you for your purchase. Click here to download the ebook. Right? That page is valuable real estate. If you can get to somebody and say, hey, let me put an ad for my product on your thank you page with your affiliate link, does it cost him anything to do that? No. One time, he'll put the little ad on his page. And now you're leveraging off of all of his traffic. And what type of traffic is that? The best traffic there is. It's a paid customer, right? The late Gary Halbert, one of the best, best direct marketers of all time, he had an expression that was called, buyers are like porcupines in heat. I don't really know what it meant, but I, I, I'm pretty sure it meant that porcupines have got to strike while the iron's hot, because it doesn't happen very often, <laughs> all right? He says buyers are the same way. Uh, guys, anybody, any, anybody in here play golf? Remember when you first got the bug, ladies, gentlemen, right? You were buying the shoes, you were buying the, 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 the golf clubs, you were buying the gloves, you were buying the hats, you were buying the shirts, you're watching the golf channel, you're buying everything to cure your swing because you were a buyer and you were buying everything about golf. But then a couple of months later, a couple of years later, everything fizzles out and if somebody invites you to go play golf, you'll use the old golf clubs. It doesn't matter anymore. So the same thing happens when that buyer is on a thank you page, they are in a buying state. They're excited. They want to buy everything related to what they just bought. Have, have any of us ever been there? <laughs> right? Of course. So if your ad is there, they're going to click that ad and most likely buy your product. 20% of those clicks usually lead to sales. So you guys are wondering, how can, how can I get my product out there? Find what you might think is a competitor 
that's already successful and is already selling all these products and get with them and see if you can put your, your product in a little ad on their thank you page. And this person's doing all the marketing. They're doing the search engine optimization. They've got the JV partners. They're doing the Google AdWords. They're doing the Facebook advertising. They're acquiring the customer. And all you did is ask them to put a little ad on their thank you page. That's, a, that's an incredible tip there, guys. I did an entire home study course on that. Um, and there are a few marketers that I know that do it very, very well. And those are the guys that are making a lot of money and not working hard to do it. You connect one time, give it to the JV partner, and you never have to worry about it for, for years to come. It's free traffic. It's free money. Somebody had a question? He's asking, he's asking if you can, if you take the, the, one, the pre written blog, and I said to rewrite it, if you can spin it. Spin it is a, is a term to, uh, it's a software where you can put an article in and it finds synonyms and it rewrites some of the words so that Google sees it as unique content. Um, I think it's beyond the scope of, of, of this event. I don't normally recommend it. I truly believe in just everything being completely organic. I've seen, I've seen those articles that, are, you know, that have been written, and they just, I think when somebody comes to those actual pages, it just doesn't make sense, no matter how good those, those, those softwares are. I would recommend you take the time to just write it yourself, but that's, that's me. All right, number six, communication is everything, all right? Business people are busy, extremely busy. Don't assume they have the time to read what you send them. Tom, you're aware of this. Joe, you're aware of this. We send emails to our JV partners. If we put more than three paragraphs in the email and then provide them with the link and the swipe copy, our JV partners will reply back to us and say, great, can you get me the links and the swipe copy? <laughs> Mike, am I, am I right? OK. People are busy. They're busy running their own business. They have good intentions. but. They realize, oh my goodness, it's 11.30 at night. I've got 42 emails left. And you know, it's skim, 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 skim. They're skimming, skimming through. So you need to communicate, but you need to communicate in, in chunks with them. And don't, don't write them a whole novel about how the product is going to change the world and all that. Just the facts, ma'am. All right? Keep everything short and sweet and precise. And look at it. Go back at it again and say, am I, am I giving up too much? It happens to me all along, all the time. I say, I'm going to write a short email. And then I start writing, and I realize I'm probably about seven paragraphs in, and I haven't even gotten to the EPC or the links or the swipe. And I'm saying, if I would have gotten this email, I would have hit the archive button already. It's, you know, people are busy. They have good intentions, but we can't make it cumbersome for, for them. OK, we were talking before, talk in terms of EPC. That's earnings per click. So again, you can put things like you get paid 50% commission, 40% commission, 70% commission, whatever the case is. I don't even put that in my emails anymore. I went away. I went away from it completely. In fact, we don't pay 50% commission. We pay, on average, 40% commission. That could be a stigma. Somebody may say, why are you paying 40%? instead of 50%. Do you know so-and-so pays 70%? Well, the one that's paying 70%, that guy's not converting. <laughs> His earnings per click are at 60 cents a click. You could have a 100% commission. But if I'm at 40%, you're getting $3 a click. Which one's better? The earnings per click. That's really the only thing that matters. All right? Now, uh, again, depending on your industry, if people don't understand uh, remember before I said if, you're, if you have to use the word like referral program instead of affiliate program, I would, um, I would probably get away from things like commissions um, or even earnings per click and just talk in terms of if you refer us a customer, we will send you a referral check for $40. I would just, just make it very simple like that if you're you know, dealing in a, in a niche outside of the industry that, uh, like I said, real estate. Uh, financial investing or business opportunity, business building or personal development. 
Use simple math. Uh, as I said before, use things like if you make 10 cells, if you make 100 cells, if you make 1,000 cells. This should be done every single time. Do the math for people. Why? Because it creates a very big number. If you make 10,000 sales, you will make 30,000, uh, 10,000 clicks, you will make $30,000. And then, I, as I said before, I'll repeat it. I'll put, it doesn't matter if it takes you uh, one week or one year to get the 10,000 clicks, this is what you would earn. It puts it in that person's head, well, what if I did something that got me 30,000 clicks or, or 10,000 clicks over the next two years? They at least know exactly how much money they'd make. Use JV testimonials of other JV partners or of those they know to get new JV partners, okay? That's some of the most powerful things is to be able to go to um, a, J, uh, a new JV partner and say, look what my other JV manager had to say, uh, my, my other JV partner had to say. Hi, I just want to let you know, I had an opportunity to work with Mike Evans. Um, Mike made some bold claims about what his product would do, but I decided to give it a shot. We sent it out to our list, uh, and it actually exceeded expectations. Our customers loved the product. There was very, very low refund, and his customer support was excellent. When I see somebody else telling me that, instead of the vendor or the JV affiliate manager, it means a lot to me. The same way it works in a sales letter, right? Testimonials, we tend to take third-party um, uh, testimonials uh, as the truth. Uh, somebody can say whatever they want about their, their product. When we see what the public is saying, it tends to be more true. Okay? So I'll probably get to it uh, in the future, but what does that mean? What, what does that mean that we need to do with our JV partners after they promote? What do we need to ask them for? Testimonial. testimonial. Right. After every JV partner promotes, ask them for a testimonial. One of the best I've seen with this is Brian Cause. Brian Cause used it on me. And then as soon as I did very, very well, he, he asked me to write one. And what I've noticed, and it happens with me, whenever we write a testimonial, we tend to just, we talk about like how great it was. We love to, to, um, to come across and, and fulfill the promise when somebody asks us for a testimonial. And you see that at events, right? Hey, would you like to give us a testimony for the event? Yep, camera gets in front of you. Hey, I just want to let you know I've been here. This is the best event I've ever been to in my life. And everybody's all excited, and you want to get, you want to get them when they're excited. Moving on. Number six. Is that the same slide? Oh, no, we continue. I didn't make the same copy-paste mistake this time. OK, more bullet points on the same subject. Call them, text them, and hug them. Give them a big virtual hug, all right? When your affiliates are doing well, they may not even know. No, I'm sorry, when your JV partners. When your JV partners are doing well, they may not even know. Um, I'm going to give another example here with Mike. Mike, you came up to me the other day and said, thank you for promoting. Uh, yeah, and I said, what product was that? And he, he, he said, crowd conversion. And I said, oh, how did we do? He said, oh, you did very, very well. Right? <laughs> I'm busy running my business. We fulfill, but I don't go in and check the stats, which is really not a very, very good thing, right? What we, what we want is we want that communication, the way that Mike did that. Now I know. He's making sure that he's communicating with me, saying, thank you, here's how you performed. Because if he doesn't do that, when they come back to ask me again next time, I'm going to be like, I don't, we didn't do very good with that, or whatever the case is, we're going to forget. So what I say, call them, text them, or hug them. What Joe will do is he'll usually hit them up twice a day and let them know how their sales are, especially when they start promoting. Hey, just noticed you made another sale. He'll take a screenshot of their commissions and send it to them in a text message. So they're seeing, wow, look at that, made $6,200 today, okay? All these little things start adding up. Somebody else may ask, hey, how did you do when you promoted Phil Same's product? Oh, actually pretty good. Joe was sending me all these text messages, blowing up my phone with commissions. We, we have to remember people are busy. They're not always going to be checking those stats. So we need to let them know that they're doing good. Sounds crazy. But remember, we're not talking about affiliates. We're talking about JV partners, the busy people that can do a lot for us. The affiliate that makes one sale for $198, I can assure you that person knows. 
They're doing cartwheels and showing their spouse on the computer that they made $198. I remember when I was there, I did cartwheels. I was excited. Okay? The JV partners, they have leverage. They're moving through a business. They got a lot of stuff going on, so we need to pamper them. Is everybody getting this? Yes. Great. Let them know when they make a sale. Let them know how much they made. And let them know when you paid them. Hey, Tom, just want to let you know uh, we just dumped $16,000 in the uh, Strategic Profits PayPal account. Oh, cool. I'll tell Rich. Right? It's, you, you would say, how can that be possible that they wouldn't know that, they, that that actually hit? Well, they're not, they're not the bookkeepers. They're not in the accounting department anymore. A good marketer is focusing on the marketing and is not necessarily looking at every line item transaction in PayPal. But let me tell you, when 16,000 hits, they're very, very happy to know. And then the next time, it's time to, you know, 60, 90 days, maybe go back to that JV partner, something we're going to talk about in the future. All these little reminders are going to let them know that they had a real good experience with you. Finally, under promise and over deliver. When you're talking about what they're going to earn, under promise, over deliver. We have a tendency to do the opposite. We think that people need to hear the higher numbers. Nothing bothers a JV manager more than hearing they're going to get paid $4 a click and they make $2 a click. They will start annoying the, the JV manager. Hey, was you, did, you guys, was, did your website go down? No, the site's been up. Well, it's strange. You told me that everybody else was getting $4 a click, and we're only getting $2 a click. You know, maybe my traffic's not converting, and now the experience is not, it's not good for me. I felt like I was going to do better. Had they told me $1.75 a click and I get $2 a click, I'm going to be even happier. And then the other thing that happens is, in an industry, people talk. So they start reaching out to other people like, how are you doing on that? I'm doing about $1.75 a click. Same with you. And they start talking, yeah, they said $4 a click. Guess what happens to the reputation of that, that marketer right now? Right. It seems like they'll say anything to get people on board. So we want to un over -promise, under promise, over deliver. Okay? Uh, let me go back to that. <clears throat> Before you go out to your JV partners, you need to know your metrics. Okay? So you're going to have to buy, uh, you're going to have to get either advertising from Google or do what's called a solo ad drop. You can buy email advertising. Uh, there's, there's, way, there's, there's companies out there that will send traffic to you. Or if you have your own list, which is the best, send it out to your own list and then you tell your JV partners, when we tested it to our in-house list, we got $5 a click. However, these people have a very good relationship with us and are already targeted to this type of offer. So you can probably expect uh, uh, commissions to be somewhere around $2 to $3 a click. And if they're a quality targeted customer like ours, you may be able to see the $5 per click. Again, you want to uh, under promise, over deliver. Number seven, eight, make things easy for them. Okay? Do it all for them. I'm going to go through these and then recap. Sign them up, get their links, get their pre-written email copy and their swipe. Email them their swipes, their links already for them. Wow. We live in such a pampered world with these uh, JV partners. <laughs> I'm telling you. They see a sign-up form and they just, it, you, know, it, you know, it's like having to you know, do the SATs. Like, Joe, is it right? They see a sign-up form and they're like, Man, I don't, have, I don't have time for this. Can't you just get me right at the bottom? My links and my swipe. So, sign them up. Put their name, put their email address in, create their account, make their password, log in, get their links, get the swipe copy, where it says insert affiliate link here, put their links in, and then email them and say, here's your links and swipe. And trust me, 
If I could log into their Aweber account or their Infusion account <laughs> and send the email for them, I would. And I think some of them would appreciate it. Google Docs. Here's another tip. Got this uh, working with one of my JV partners, Omar Martin. <clears throat> he puts all of the stuff, these links and swipes and where to sign up for the affiliate program, where to check your stats, when you get paid, everything in one Google document. Now, everybody knows what Google Docs is, right? No? Did somebody say no? You did. Okay. So Google Docs is like an online Microsoft Office. So they have uh, like a Google document, Google spreadsheets, things like that. So um, you just go to you search, do a Google search for Google Docs. Um, so you could create a Word document, and the Word document says this is what the commission is, this is what your earnings per click are, this is where you sign up, this is where you check your stats, but better yet, what I would recommend is you sign up for them. And then in this Google document, you put their swipe, you say day one or Monday, send this out. It's pre-written, has their link. On Wednesday, send out this email. On Friday, send out this email. And then you save it and you share the document with them and they get a link. Once that link goes in their email, they click on it and they go to this document. It has all of their swipes, all the information, and it's a, it's a dynamic document. Anytime you want to change anything, you go into that document and you could say, just to let you know you were paid 2300 today. When they go back to that document, they don't have to keep re-emailing you a new document or an update or anything like that. It's a living, breathing, dynamic document. Does everybody understand that? It's a great way to communicate with your JV partner. Put all the information into a Google document and share the link with them. And that link will have all of that document will have all of their swipe and their emails in there for them, pre-written. <coughs> Number nine. This is what we were talking about before integration marketing. Place your ads in their thank you pages. So everybody, everybody got what we did that before. So how do you find these competitors? Go to Google, put the search term in that you would search for if you were a customer looking for your product, and see who comes up number one. See who comes up number two. See who comes up number three. And then go on the right side and see who's advertising. And go in, look at their products. Say, hey, that sounds like a great product that if somebody bought this product, they may want to buy that product. This reminds me of something a friend of uh, Tom and, and, uh, and I, uh, Dr. Mike, spoke about. He was trying to find, um, I believe it was, uh, an acne product, and um, he wanted to target people that might have acne, but may not be looking for a solution, right? It's great if somebody says, I have acne, and they're looking for a solution, but if you want to target somebody, what, uh, what he would do is he said, well, let me, let me target um, cheerleaders, because they prob they're probably people that have acne and, and may not want it. So he would go into forums for, uh, for cheerleaders or find products related to cheerleaders. And so let's say there's a, a somebody that had an information product on you know, how to become you know, a, a cheerleader. You could even get with a person like that if you had an acne product and say, can you put your ad in my members area? Right? So you have to sometimes also think out the box. What type of, other, what type of people may have a product that would also work with your product, maybe not even necessarily a competitor, just a targeted customer, right? That makes sense? Yeah. Okay, next. Same, same idea in their members area. So this person doesn't have a thank you page, they have a membership site, same thing. You contact them, you say, hey, why don't you put a tab up in your members area called featured products and put your product there. Next, their email autoresponders. Most people, if they have an email autoresponder, have two to three emails, maybe four, at best seven. No matter how many they have, they could always add three more, right? So, <coughs> excuse me, if you have pre-written autoresponder emails or email swipe, and you meet a JV partner at an event, and you're connecting with them, you're not looking for them to just promote your product, okay? You want all three. You want them to promote your product, 
put an ad for your product on their thank you page for whatever they're marketing, and then ask them to put your products in their email funnels. So when somebody signs up to hear, a, join my newsletter and get blah, 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 they're going to go through their normal sequence. Sooner or later, that sequence ends, right? I mean, it just doesn't go on for you know, 700 years. Usually about seven or 10 emails. Ask that person to put you as number eight, number nine, and number 10. You're going to be getting all the traffic that for every opt-in, all the marketing they're doing, they're going to be advertising your product. Make sense? OK. And obviously, the email that you provide to them will have their affiliate link, so you both make money. OK. Number 10, recency is king. OK. Pay your JV partners weekly or even daily for your top JV partners. If you have to, hold 20% reserved. Use the 80-20 rule. So if they earned $1,000 commission, instead of making them wait, why do we make them wait 30 and 60 days? Sure. Waiting for the refund, right? JV partners don't make one sale. They make 10, 15, 20. So what you can do is you can, if you know your refund rate is 15%, well then hold 20% back and pay them the same day. So what that means is, if your JV partner earned, made 20,000 in sales, but earned 10,000 in commissions, and you have a 20% refund rate, well, his 10,000 commission is gonna be worth 8,000, and you pay him in 60 days because you had to wait for the refund, right? Well, what would happen if you just pull that refund rate out and estimated it right from the beginning. You have the money, the customer's already paid you. You got paid the 20,000. The JV partners earned 10. Well, hold out the reserve portion already. Just calculate it. Take out the 20%, take the eight grand, and send them a check the same day. The JV partner is gonna be like, wow. I just got, I sent an email yesterday, and today I just made 8,000, or 800, whatever the number is. They're going to be much more likely to send another email that same day. <laughs> it's, recency is king. It's just true. People, people like instant results. I tell you what, if I told you I had an affiliate program that's going to pay you $100,000, but it's going to pay you in 40 years, you'd be like, oh, well. <laughs> right? Well. That's an extreme, and paying instant is an ex extreme. But somewhere along the line, 60 days sucks. Excuse my language. It, it just does. JV partners will be going through the mail sometimes and be like, High Tech Resources, Inc., 6200. Who is this? And they go around for, who's High Tech Resources, blah, blah, blah. Oh, oh, we promoted that back in December. And like, it's almost like a, like a bad feeling. Like, it took me this long to get my money? Right? It's just, again, why, why do we want those feelings with a JV partner? We want to give them virtual hugs. We want to pay them quickly. And then somebody says, hey, what was it like working with that person? Dude, all I can tell you is I sent an email, and the next day I had eight grand in my PayPal. Work with them. The product was good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Is that the way you pay it, through PayPal? Yeah, yeah, we pay through PayPal. Yeah. Quick tip. Change your sales notifi notification subject lines, all right? You know, inside your shopping cart, why should it say, you made, a, you made a sale, you made a sale, you made a sale? We change our subject line to say, another, another MikeFullSame.com Inc. commission. Isn't that a great thing, great for branding, that it's just blowing up their inbox and they just keep seeing that thing? How are you doing with Mike's promotion? I don't know, but all I know is I just keep seeing another commission keep coming in. If it doesn't say that, if they're promoting a lot of different products, they might not know whose commission that is. Number 12, spoil your JV partners. Okay? Don't treat them like just affiliates. Get to know them, invite them to your parties, invite them to your office, and invite them to your events. Give them comps to your event. Make them be stars. Bring them up on stage for hot seat sessions. Make them feel important, because they are important. Okay? Give them comp copies of your product. Everybody got that? Okay, back. If you didn't, give them comp copies of your product. Number 13. 
Reward action with prizes. I've been throwing out some big numbers, right? 8,000, 30,000, 15,000, right? If somebody is making or has the ability to make $15,000 from sending an email, does an extra $500 really get them that excited as a prize? In, in my opinion, it doesn't. You know what's a $500 value that gets them going crazy? An iPad. <laughs> it's amazing. You can tell them, hey, if you send three emails in one week, I'll give you an extra $500 prize. It's like, well, I'm promoting and getting a commission anyway. So it, it, it just doesn't excite them. You tell them, if you send three emails, you get a brand new iPad 3, and all of a sudden, after they sent two and they hear from Joe, dude, you only got to send out one more email by Sunday and you get a free iPad. And they're always remembering how the daughter said, Daddy, when am I going to get an iPad? And, you know, because you know, the brother has one and they're fighting for it. Nobody would, would want to pay for something like that when they can get it for free. So um, it doesn't have to be an iPad. It can be an Apple gift card for $50 or an Apple gift card for 100 or an Amazon gift card for 50 depending where you are in your budget and how much, how much they can promote and how well your product's converting. But prizes over cash usually do a lot better. Okay? iPod Touch. I don't know. What, what do they go for? $199? Those make good prizes. Things like that. Amazon Kindle. They just dropped those down to $149. Or refurbished, I think. But $149. Bucks. Win, win a free Amazon Kindle Fire. Anybody that sends an email today gets a free Kindle Fire. Asterisk. Must make three sales. Something along those lines, depending, you know, you want to make sure you cover your margins. Run contests. Every single month, you should have some type of contest going on, no matter what it is. Anyone who does this gets this. Have qualifiers. You always want to have a qualifier. In other words, you don't want to say to somebody, if you send an email, you get this, and then you forgot that this person only has 13 people on their list. And they, they did what you said. So you, know, you might want to put a qualifier in there. Um, give away iPads, other cool gifts, et cetera. OK, run specials for your JV partners, meaning pay them higher commissions. It's just another reason to go out and contact them. Hey, just like, just like Best Buy, right? You know, this week, it's half off. This week, we're doubling commissions. Remember, commissions are free money, guys. They send you the traffic, you get 100%, whatever you pay them, the rest you keep. So if you go from 40% to 80%, well, you know, I don't know that I want to give away 80% commission. Well, it, they, how about if they don't do anything? How about if they promote nothing? What's better, right? So again, if you, if you think in those terms, what is something I can do to ex uh, excite my JV partners, maybe the ones that have promoted two or three times, these are the types of things sometimes you want to think out of, out of the box. Now, you don't have to double it. You can go from 40% to 60 or 50 to 70, like that. Special prizes for certain goals. We just said that. You know, you can communicate with a JV partner. We do this all the time. We'll work with our JV partners, and we'll tell them, um, you know, if you get this many sales or send this many emails or get this many clicks, that's the best. If you can drive this many clicks, we will take you on the marketer's cruise. Number 15, run specials for their customers. Hey, Tom, if we do a webinar together, um, or, or you, you have a regular product, let's do a webinar, right, instead. I noticed you did a product launch, right? What did, what did Rich and I and you do for, for Brendan with, uh, with Experts Academy? And, and we did a special, special webinar. Right, we were, we were on the marketer's cruise in Panama, and Tom and I, <laughs> I, oh man, I remember I said to Tom, I said, Tom, I said, do you realize like the call is like $2 a minute? You know how much this is going to be? He's like, he's like, dude, there's a $100,000 first place prize. I said, I know, sometimes I'm being penny wise and dollar foolish, huh? So we did a webinar with Brendan, uh, and uh, it was a special, special thing that we reached out and said, we'll do something special. Next. 
do a special training session for the JV partner. So you could say, um, hey, Mike, if, uh, if, if you guys promote, I tell you what, I'll do a special one-on-one -on -one training session with anybody that buys. We normally don't do that. That's an extra blah, blah, blah. But if you have a JV partner that can drive a lot of traffic, you got to be able to step out of the box and do something special for their customers only. Do a special price. Our product normally sells for $9.97. I'll do a special webinar for your customers. I'll give them a special coaching session, and I'll drop the price to $4.97. But the sale will only be good on that webinar. All right? I'm getting excited just talking about it. Take good care of their customers and have good customer support. If you think that the only thing that JV partners care about is commissions, you're 100% wrong. They care mostly about their customers and that your product will deliver and not have them at their help desk saying, I bought his product and blah, 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 blah. At that point, you might get a phone call that says, look, I don't want the check. Refund everybody. Well, it was just three people. Refund everybody. And that's just that's a heartbreaking thing, right? So remember, make sure you have good support in place and your, your systems are in place should you get somebody to promote for you, right? Number 17, we spoke about this before, ask for referrals. So when somebody promotes your product and does well while they're excited, hey, man, thanks for sending me that 16 grand. Text back, hey. Would you mind uh, sending me a quick little email testimonial? And I've always learned the best way to get a testimonial is to tell people an example of what a good testimonial is. Show them what other people said. Or say something about, you know, if you don't know what to say, talk about how you were happy that you got paid quick, what your earnings per click was, and how happy the customers were. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I dealt with Mike, and the earnings per click were this. It was blah, blah. Just help them out. You know, because people get writer's block even with little things like that. Number, oh, we got that one. Um, next, when you're asking for a referral in the car business, we used to call this a bird dog, right? We sit down with a customer, we're showing them the car. Hey, do you have anybody, you know, at church or in Cub Scouts or a family member or friend that might also be interested in a Toyota? Maybe not now, but in the next year or so. If you let us know, we'll send you a gift certificate to Roots Chris, right? Because you couldn't say in the car business, I'm going to give you a commission, right? But in our industry, if you just get that person that just, you just paid, and I'm just going to use this example so that it's just consistent, right? You just paid them $16,000. Do you think that that person knows somebody else that could probably send $16,000? Yeah, in the industry, usually, you know, the boats ride with the tide. So if you say to that person, hey, Thanks for that testimonial. Do you know, I'm not going to ask you to, to introduce me to 10 or 15 people. If you could introduce me to just one person that you think would also be happy to promote this product, who would that be? And I'd be happy to pay you 10% commission instantly or the same day after they promote. The person would be, wow, I can just introduce them to so-and-so and then get another $1,600 check. And this helps you keep getting new JV partners. See how the cycle starts growing? Pay fast on the 10% as well. And work with JV brokers, too. There's a couple of JV brokers. If you're in the room now, JV brokers, raise your hand. OK. These are the guys. Raise your, stand up, guys. Stand up. These are JV brokers. OK. Find out what industries they reach, and they will get you free traffic. Because you get paid first, and then pay half out later. It's the best traffic. So these are guys that you want to meet after, uh, after the presentation, OK? And remember, they don't cost you anything. Only, only when they make a sale. Only after you get the money, you pay them for the great traffic and connections that they get you. Number 18. We were talking about the difference between JV partners and affiliates. But let's not ignore the affiliates. Let's turn the affiliates into JV partners. So if you have an affiliate base, all these people that are on your affiliate program, and we have what are known as inactive affiliates and active affiliates, most people have more inactive affiliates. That's somebody that has not made a sale for you in 90 days. What you need to do is 
do webinars to train them. You can do an automated webinar. Everything that we learned over this weekend can be applied, the same strategies. Hi, my name is Mike Fulsain. Do you know that affiliates can make this much money, blah, blah, blah? I'm doing a free training webinar this week that's going to show you how for an hour a day you can make X, Y, Z. And you can either automate it or get on there with you or your JV partner or your JV manager or your JV broker and do it once a month or once a week or whatever and train your affiliates because they're going to say, I don't understand. You keep saying swipe copy, right? Not everybody knows what we're talking about, but I want to take this affiliate and turn them into a fan and a loving JV partner, right? You got you to build those relationships. We don't want to take them for granted because every JV partner at one time didn't even know what internet marketing was, including me. Number 19, wash, rinse, repeat. The biggest mistake we make sometimes is we get the JV partner, they mail, and we put a check by them, and we think we're done. Don't be afraid to ask again if they did well. Ask again in a few months. Go back. Go back to the well. There's water in it. Don't keep drink, uh, digging new wells. You're, yes? <laughs> How did we do last night? No. <laughs> Your best JV partners remain your best JV partners. Rich Sheffrin and Tom Beal and, and uh, my company, our relationship with that will be a testament to that. Tom and I, we have a good relationship. We know when to bring it up and we know when not to. We don't bring it up every week. But every three months, the question is, how can we help each other? And you know what? We do help each other. It would be foolish for our companies not to work together. So you want to make sure that if you have somebody that did well, go back in 90 days. And remember, offer them something special, an iPad, higher commission, et cetera. OK. Uh, as we said, never one and done. And then finally, number 20, going to marketing events. OK? You want to make going to events a regular part of your networking. It's, there's something magical that happens when you connect with people. You can connect on the phone, you can connect on Skype, and you can connect on email. But connecting in person is where relationships and million dollar businesses are made. And I've seen it happen over and over again. So what I'm gonna do now, guys, is I'm gonna bring up my partner, and something called the Marketer's Cruise. Who's been on the Marketer's Cruise before? Raise your hand. OK, great. Uh, Captain Lou, if you can make your way up, uh, up here, Captain Lou, is going to talk to you about something called the Marketer's Cruise. And I want to let you know something up front. This is an invitation and not a pitch. This is not something that we profit from other than a carnival commission. And it is not something that Dave profits from or anything like that. You've seen the booth out there. Captain Lou's going to tell you, as an ambassador to the industry, every year I take a vacation with 400 other entrepreneurs. We call it the Marketer's Cruise. We don't allow speakers. There's no selling at the event. We take vacations with other like-minded individuals. My motto was and always has been from the beginning, we work hard. We're entitled to a vacation. We're going to take a vacation. Let's take it together. Bring your family, bring your parents, bring your kids, bring your neighbors. It's your vacation. But at least you have an opportunity to take a vacation with, with uh, people that are like-minded. Captain Lou, if you could come up, explain the, uh, the marketer's cruise. Uh, and we would love to see you on vacation uh, next year. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Copy time.